today we're going to take a quick look at a tiny little mini wireless touchpad and keyboard. You can see from the size of my hand just how small this thing is going to be. And that's what it's going to look like. So it's sort of a two-in-one with an extra large touch area, exclusive gestures to simplify common controls, vibration, not sure what the vibration would be for, but we'll see, and ergonomic design. This is the Evanpo E3 mini wireless touchpad and keyboard. Let's open the box. So you get an installation and user manual, the keyboard touchpad itself, maybe a little bigger than I kind of expected it to be, micro USB charging cable, and a USB dongle. That is the one thing I will say about the last couple of these little keyboards that I've taken a look at. It would be kind of nice to not have this dongle. It'd be nice if it were Bluetooth, but I'm sure that would make it more expensive. And then finally, you have the keyboard itself, which actually on the packaging here, I didn't even see that. So here are some of the gestures you'll be able to use with this touchpad, using it as a touchpad instead of a keyboard. Left mouse button, mouse moving, Right mouse button is a two finger click. Scrolling the screen is two fingers up and down. Zooming in and out is pinching. Task switching with three fingers. It says there's a gestures trigger zone. So you can do enter, escape, or left, right, up and down by holding the gesture and then clicking. That'll do an enter. Holding it and two finger click does escape. Holding it and moving your finger around does left, right, up and down. So that's presumably a cursor. Then you've got a low power, a charge LED, an operation, an RF LED left and right mouse buttons, a keyboard mode light, a touch mode light, and the mode switch button. And that's something I didn't even realize. This is not gonna have a place for removable batteries. It's got a micro USB charging port, as well as power on, power off, and volume controls. So apparently, if we just switch this on, yeah, power's up. It says right now it's in touch mode and RF. That's the operation mode light, so it's attempting to find its control. I and mean, if you're just gonna use this as like a, a touch pad, this is definitely a really nice, really big touch area. You know, it's probably safe to go ahead and just plug this in and test it out. It says that it works on, had to go zoom in so I could see it. And there's a lot of repetition in this list, but it says PC, laptop, Mac, Linux, HTPC, IPTV, Google, smart Android TV box, XBMC, Windows 2000, all the Windowses, but it doesn't work with the Fire TV. Luckily, I don't actually have a Fire TV. I have the TV sticks elsewhere in the house. They don't have USB ports, but we'll go ahead and try it out with my Mac. Maybe we'll try it with my Windows PC in the other room. Just see how it works. And I've gone ahead and attached the keyboard to my Mac. I do have it turned on, and when we get up close here, you can see it's currently in touch mode. If I tap this button, it goes into keyboard mode. So I'm in the Notes app, and I can just start typing. I can move my finger around. A little hard to demonstrate while, yeah, behind the camera. It does have a buzz to it, if you can hear that. So every time you tap a key buzzing. One thing I did find very cool about it though is if I run my finger along an entire row it'll type everything that I touch. So if I do the whole QWERTY row I think I missed a letter there but it does say QWERTY all the way over to O. So every letter there from Q to O was typed. And the typing experience because there aren't any actual keys to press it's a little awkward. I mean just to give you a test here T-E-S-T-I-N-G yeah, I totally typed that wrong. I can't actually see everything. So definitely not going to be my favorite typing experience because you're going to have to look directly at it to see exactly what it is you're touching. And then switching it over to mouse mode, I can move my cursor around and you can see it there moving. If I come over here to my browser, I can use two fingers to swipe up and down. But unfortunately with the Mac, three fingers does not do a task switch going back and forth between desktops or anything. So it doesn't support the full range of gestures on a Mac. Not surprised there, but I've typed some text. Let's see if enter works. So I hold gesture mode and then tap. It did do an enter. And then if I hold gesture mode again and start swiping left and right, it does go left and right in my typing area. So yeah, as with most of these things, because they're not really designed with Mac in mind, it is missing out on the gestures and that's a bit of a bummer for me. But what I would normally use this kind of thing for is for my HTPC, for my Windows computer I've got hooked up to my TV. So let's go try it with that. And I've gone ahead and hooked it up to my Windows PC now. I've got it set to keyboard mode as you can see. So let me go ahead and hit enter, see if we can log in. And there we go, I was able to log in. I've got it back in mouse mode just so I can move around. Boy, I haven't used this machine in a while. But if I type in notepad, now, now I can. Well, that's really interesting. Apparently the alt key seems to be stuck. Let me turn it off and back on, see if that helps. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but the alt key appears to be stuck on my Windows machine now. The typing experience is exactly as it was on the Mac. It's awkward. And I've noticed even though I change it over to keyboard, it automatically switches itself back over to mouse after a short amount of time. So that's a little confusing. But using that three finger gesture that they suggested, the task switcher does appear to work. But yeah, that computer is completely acting up. Either way, for the price point, I think it's getting the job done. I think my computer is just having a problem at the moment. The typing experience is something that I would definitely not recommend. Using this just as a 
touchpad though, very nice. Nice to have something that is this large. For that 10 foot experience, for that home theater PC type experience, I think it would definitely be a nice addition. If it's something that you're interested in, I'll put a link to where you can find it down below. The build quality is pretty decent, and again, it's 20 bucks. So thanks as always for watching. If you liked the video, make sure hit that thumbs up button down below. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down, that's cool too. Subscribe to the channel though to get notified when I put out new videos, and if you like what I'm doing here and you wanna support what I'm doing, I definitely appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.